Hi everyone, this is Bobby from BN-Games.com and today we're going to do the review for the Sega Astro Mini Cab from Japan, an import. Um, I know that it came out about a week ago, I've had it for about a week now, and I know there have been a lot of videos about it, and I'm hoping that this one might be a little different than the others. Most of them that I've seen so far have really only focused on the cabinet itself. Um, I have the entire set. I have the uh, cabinet stand with the stool, and I also have the fight stick and the controller. So um, this is going to be a really long video. It's going to be probably a lot longer than those other videos you've seen. Uh, we're going to start off with the unboxing, which will be coming up next. Then we'll go into uh, using the cabinet itself with the controllers. Then I'll dedicate a part to the fight stick and what I think about that. And then just my general base conclusion. So this is a long form video. Uh, I'm going to put timestamps in the description below and I'm kind of trying to use that YouTube YouTube's new newfangled chapter selection so I'm going to try to do that as well if you want to skip to the conclusion or anything else you want to see as always please put your comments and questions below and uh, let's get started uh, let's start with the unboxing Surprisingly, everything came in one box, which I was really happy about, and I ordered this off of AmiAmi. Ami. Actually, I set a pre-order months and months ago and then got the payment re request. Uh, it came out to 48,948 yen, which is approximately $492.59. At least that's what I paid at the time, you know, currency exchange uh, differs, but this is the whole package, uh, as I said before. It's the cabinet, the cabinet stand with a little seat, uh, one controller, and the fight stick. I really like the packaging these items came in. The boxes are a nice feel and they have a really nice look so they can be used as displays as well. First impressions when holding the controller, it feels a lot like a six-button Sega Genesis control pad. The D-pad especially, it has uh, a very similar feel to that. And I like the button layout, it's very similar to the Sega Saturn. And, of course, the six-button Sega Genesis controller. Um, the corners are a little sharp, but it still feels pretty good in the hand and the buttons feel okay.
What I found particularly surprising about the cabinet stand is that it doubles as a, a piggy bank. So you could fit coins in here and there's a little um, plastic plug at the bottom you can pull out when it gets full if you want to get to the coins. And I like these little details with the fake wheels and showing connectors on the back of the cabinet. That's a really nice touch. For those of you who are not candy cap collectors like I am, these little stools, these arcade accurate stools, the real ones in real life are actually very difficult to get here in the States. Mine are all black, uh, but there are blue and red ones that I've seen at least pictures of, and it's very accurate. It's, it looks just like my other stools, but if you're into the arcade scene or the candy cabinet scene, it is very difficult to get those and very expensive. This also includes a plastic marquee, which I'm not going to put those stickers on it. Um, I'm going to keep it clear, um, but it's a nice touch. And here it is, the main event, the main item of the package that most of you would be ordering and looking to buy. Um, it's a nice, neat, small package. Um, it's actually a little smaller than I was expecting physically, but uh, once again we have a very nice box that shows the game list, although I don't speak Japanese or read Japanese, so this is kind of useless to me, but I wanted to show it anyway and uh, show the box pictures and right there it shows what it can do, what it can display output. We're going to open it up and uh, take a look at uh, the actual cabinet. First impressions of the cabin are very good. These buttons and sticks feel really good. I, I was actually really shocked when I took it out of the packaging and started fiddling around with the sticks, even before playing in the games. They do appear to be micro switches, at least the six screen buttons and the joystick, although the start and select button, uh, the little yellow buttons aren't. And as you can see here, here are all the sides with HDMI out, two USB for player one, player two controllers, and it's powered by uh, USB micro. Um, and it's it's a nice package overall, and it comes with um, a USB cord, but it doesn't come with a USB power brick, so um, you're going to have to find a phone charger with a USB power brick uh, to plug this into the wall, otherwise you can plug it into another device that has USB power, like in my testing, I actually plugged it into my PS5 just to get power to it, so that'll work too, but keep that in mind if you do order one of these. Now, to be completely honest with you, um, I was actually most interested in the fight stick itself, at least as part of this package. Um, it was also the thing that I worried about the most, um, just based on the fact that it doesn't have any of the buttons for like a PS4, or PS5, and uh, I wasn't sure how this, how well this was going to work with the um, cabinet itself, especially since you consider that the price of this fight stick alone is about half of what I paid in total for the entire package, uh, including the cabinet and the stand and the one controller. But uh, no worries there, it's actually a really quality controller and we'll get into what it can do later.
And uh, here we are. We have the entire package all put together now, all the pieces unboxed. It's a very nice experience. I know this is a long part of the video, but I wanted to show what the boxes look like and just show you my first, uh, what I saw when I opened the boxes. Here I am powering on this bad boy for the first time, and let's hear what it sounds like and what it does at the first power up. Um, you just plug it in through the micro USB. I could have this plugged into to an old iPhone charger, and let's turn it on with that little yellow switch. I have no idea if Sega anticipated English players to be buying this cabinet, but I'm glad there's an English option. So all the menus are in, you know, my native language. And it's a really nice looking package. Even the screen looks really nice up close. Uh, a little hard to see. I It's a little difficult to play some of the games, but we'll get into more of that in just a bit. As you can see here, the cabinet functions just as you might expect. The games boot up pretty fast. They look pretty sharp on this little screen, and I'm very happy that they're in 4x3 format. I'd be really annoyed if they weren't, if they were stretched as maybe other consoles go. And to get out of the game, all you do is press start and select at the same time. And it gives you some options to do save states or to exit. And it's as fast as that to move on to another game that's in the cabinet itself. Now we're going to move on to putting the cabinet stand on the actual cabinet. Uh, keep in mind, as I said, this is an optional piece, and it costs about $30. So it's not necessary, but if you own candy cabs, it kind of is required. Um, at least in my opinion, uh, it doesn't. the cabinet looks better with the stand on it because it looks more accurate. It's not exactly a one-to-one -one scale, but it does look a little more accurate. The only problem I had is getting it on the cabinet is a little difficult. I actually had to uh, tap it here a little bit, as you can see, just to get it to stick. It's not something you're going to be taking off of the cabinet um, often, and uh, once it's on, it's probably going to stay on it, but... It's a good piece, um, I and it still feels stable. You can still play with this arcade cabinet with no problems with this stand-on, even though it looks a little narrow. Um, I, I found it was uh, perfectly fine. So if you do pick up this cabinet, I really strongly suggest getting the stand so it at least looks accurate uh, to what a candy cabinet would look like. Now that we've unboxed everything, we're now going to go to actually using the cabinet um, with the TV. So we're first going to try using the cabinet itself, then we'll try with the controller, and then we'll try with the fight stick, uh, some games. It's going to be a lot of gameplay without me talking, and I'm going to try to show you me 
uh, me actually using the controller and the fight stick in the corner, and then uh, we'll move on to the fight stick itself. Now that we got the arcade cabinet connected to the capture card and the TV, I'm going to show you what it's like to actually use the cabinet uh, to show that you actually don't need the controller or the fight stick to play on the TV. Right now I'm using the controls directly on the cabinet and it's feeding video to the TV as I'm playing. Admittedly, this is definitely not the way I'd want to play these games, so I'm going to plug in the controller uh, through the USB port on the back and try that out now. Playing with the controller is okay, but the fight stick is really what I wanted to try, and here I've switched to it, so we'll try some gameplay with the fight stick.
first round. Fight! Mission one. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now I know I showed you a little bit of the fight stick and me using it in the gameplay there with the cabinet, but now we're going to move on to using the fight stick in other things and just the fight stick in general. Uh, it is a nice piece and I think it deserves its own part of this video. If you plug your fight stick into a USB port on your PC, it will download and install the driver for the fight stick pretty quickly really don't need to do anything else need anything special and as you can see here it's initialized it shows up as the astro city mini arcade stick and uh, i can go into the controller game controller settings and show that the button and sticks work For our first test, we're going to try Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. I really wanted to play this game because it has Third Strike on the PC, and it did some weird recording issues with NVIDIA Shadowplay, but after that, uh, the video seemed to fix itself. But I want to show what the experience was from start to finish. Did you catch that? Yeah, it's having trouble. Um, it recognizes most of the buttons, um, but not all of them. Specifically, it doesn't recognize up and down on the analog control, and there's no analog or digital control button on the fight stick to change. And uh, really, spoiler alert here, this is the only game I had any problems with testing on the PC, but I wanted to show it because your viol mileage may vary. And I double-checked, you know, in the controller pro uh, profile settings on Windows to make sure all the buttons registered there, but for some reason, this particular game did not work, and it doesn't help that this game is a really bad port, but I wanted to show it. And uh, at this point, I knew something was wrong, uh, even though I had clearly tried to map the controls and I knew the controller was registering, um, it just simply was not working. Um, and um, it was mixing up buttons, it was mixing up uh, directions, and no matter what I did, um, I couldn't get it to control correctly. So I was a little worried at this point. This was the first game that um, I had actually tested with the fight stick on the PC, and I thought, oh great, I'm going to need some special drivers to uh, you know, get this thing to work, or I'm going to need some weird X input uh, device or software to try to get this thing to work. But um, there's some better news along the line here. To my shock and relief, Ultra Street Fighter 4 recognized the controller and most of the buttons right off the bat. I pressed start and it went in and I was able to go to the button config and as you can see here, I was able to map all the buttons the way I wanted them and then uh, was able to play the game with really no issues. And you can see here at the top, Astro City Mini Arcade Stick, it actually showed up and I didn't do anything special. I didn't change any special drivers, I didn't change any settings in Windows, it just worked. So, again, your mileage may vary. Oh, 
And in the final PC test that I recorded, um, I tried Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, a criminally underrated game. And again, the controller worked uh, right out of the get-go. I was able to map the buttons, um, as you can see here. It really didn't have any problems. And uh, it felt great. The controller feels great. Fight. So after all that, what do I think about it as an entire package? It's pretty good. Um, as an entire package, if you've got all the parts, not just the cabinet, but the stand and the fight stick and the controller. If you buy just the cabinet, I, I don't know. Um, this is a very, a very niche product and it really only caters to, uh, well, collectors, um, retro game collectors, uh, people who really like candy cabs, especially those of you who don't have them. I always get those comments in all the videos. Um, maybe somewhere in between, but it's going to be a really small audience. The problem with this um, problem with this package is the emulation on the cabinet is not great. Uh, this is not something you're going to pick up and want to plug into your TV and use a lot. I, I can't. I certainly wouldn't. Um, I'm someone who believes in real hardware. I, I don't do emulation very often unless it's the only way I can do it. Um, and some of these are arcade ports, but, you know, like Virtual Fire, for example, is kind of janky. And I haven't gone through every game in there because uh, yeah, there's a lot of fill in there. Why are there like three versions of columns in this package? My other problem with this thing, specifically for me, is um, there's only two fighting games. Um, why didn't Sega at least get Street Fighter 2, you know? Um, why did they partner with Capcom and SNK and get some of that stuff. SNK licensed to everybody. I don't see why they wouldn't do that. It just, it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I know it's a Sega-focused package, but those cabinets, you know, have a long history beyond just Sega games. You know, there's Taito, there's Sega, um, you know, there's Konami, you know, there's a bunch of games from that era. You know, 1992 through 1995, 1996, let's say, that they could have included and tried to license with this, and they didn't. So, it, it has a limited appeal. I mean, if you really like, if you're a real big Sega guy, if you're the kind of person that's thought the Sega Genesis was better than Super Nintendo, no matter what anyone said or thought, you know, a lot of those games are probably going to be for you, but for me, who, you know, liked both, I was more of a Sega guy, but I had no problems with the Super Nintendo. I, I was a fan of both. And, um... I don't know. Uh, it's kind of lacking in the games package. It also only outputs to 720p, uh, as far as I can tell, which, you know, scales up to a 4K display okay, but it's not great either. Um, now, as a package, again, as a package, the physical package, the cabinet itself is very nice. The buttons feel really good. The little stick feels good, considering how small it is. Even with my small hands, though, it's a little too small. Uh, but that you know, you're paying for this quasi replica of a cap candy cabinet. And I've owned an Astro City. Uh, I I have owned one. Um, I sold it a while ago. It, it, admittedly, it is my least favorite candy cap. Um, it, it feels the cheapest made. Um, versus all I've owned a, a, diff, a, a number of different models of candy cabs and the Astro is kind of the uh, Kroger uh, or, or great value candy cab I mean it gets the job done uh, you know it does but 
It's not the best experience. It's not the best candy cat. I'm sorry. It just isn't. But they chose this one because they made so many of them. And if you're getting into the candy cabinet scene, they're the absolute easiest candy cap to acquire. Um, as of this filming, uh, it's actually Chris. Well, no, it's two o'clock in the morning. It's the day after Christmas. Um, you can get one for anywhere from eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars, depending on condition, depending where you're located. This is I'm in Los Angeles, remember, so I can get them for even cheaper than eight hundred if 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 I wait long enough. If you're on the East Coast, it costs more, you know, and then there's the whole shipping thing. But that cabinet is the easiest and most recognized because it was the most mass produced, as far as I can tell, and it was everywhere. <clears throat> uh, the Aero City, which was Sega's candy cabinet. Before the Astro was a better cabinet. And I've owned a couple of those. In fact, I gave one to my father. But I'm kind of getting around that. Um, so, as a collector's item, it has a lot of appeal. The games play okay, but the game selection is not great. I just, I, I don't think it's great. The emulation is not great, um, which really knocks it down another peg. But, if you really like the look of this thing, or if you're a Candy Cab fanatic like I am then it was a no-brainer to buy. I kind of think the star of the show, more so than the cabinet, at least in terms of what I like about the whole thing, is the fight stick. Now, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of great fight sticks out there. Um, you can build them, or if you're into the scene, you know, there are custom makers out there that can build a much better fight stick overall that to maybe your preference. But if you were just looking for uh, a fight stick with a nice appeal as far as visuals um, and it, good parts, uh, it's great. I have no qualms with it. Um, I wouldn't mind opening it up and checking out the inside. I might, wouldn't mind filming that if I got enough interest in it, um, but I don't see any reason to do that without any reason. The parts inside are perfectly fine. It functions, um, as you see in the video. It worked with most of the PC games I tried. Obviously, it doesn't work with the PlayStation 5. I didn't think it was going to. It doesn't have a home button, and um, some I've read conflicting reports if it works with the PS4, PS3. I haven't had a chance to set those up to try it on it, and honestly, I wouldn't anyway. You know, at this point, the PS5 is hooked up. It plays the PS4 games. Why would I put the PS4 back up? I just I don't see any reason. And most of the fighting games I'm going to play at the, this point anyway, or are on the computer, so it works with most of them so far. That Street Fighter. 30th anniversary collection is it was a real garbage port, so I'm not shocked that it didn't work. But you know, work with Ultra Street Fighter 4, it worked with um, you know, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. You know, I had to you know, obviously remap the buttons, but it worked, there was no problems with it, and it felt good. I might put an Octo Gate on it because I prefer that personally. And if I was really being nitpicky, you know, I put a Simitsu LS32. 35 36 no i'm sorry ls 56 which is the one i usually put in everything i have there all in my candies and that sort of thing um you know that'd be something as preference but if you were just to pick it up and want to play anything on a pc or laptop it's fine i didn't see any problems it installed with no issues um there might be some compatibility issues with certain games that you can't really get around and you know, like I said, Street Fighter Anniversary Collection is garbage. So, okay, you know, I know some people are playing it, but, you know, if you're buying the stick, you're probably... <laughs> you're probably not buying it to play that game. But if you wanted to, it, it, the thing about it is it's a nice form factor. It's I like the shape of it. I like the weight, even though it might be too heavy for some people. But it's not super huge and bulky. Like, I have a Mad Cat's T2. It's, it's too bulky, even though... It feels okay if it's on the right surface. This one is small enough that I might even use it more than the TE2. Um, you know, or, you know, maybe another... Uh, it, it depends. I, I like the form factor. It is a good stick. If you can get it for retail, the only thing about it that I kind of generally dislike is that the um, the USB cord is not... Um, you can't store it inside. There isn't, like, a bay to store the cord inside. You have to wrap it around old school. But if you're good with modding things, I've already seen someone who put on a you know, removable connector. So it's entirely possible to fix that issue. 
not a huge one. And if you're careful with it, it really doesn't matter. You know, the cord is long enough, you know, it's not super long, but it'll probably get the job done. But if you're only a console player, which is, you know, very likely, not going to work. It's not going to be for you. If you're on the PC, perfectly fine. And then it works perfectly fine with this cabinet as well. Uh, for the games, as far as I can tell, I don't, I don't notice any real latency beyond what the emulation's already doing. You know, if you're really sensitive to that, maybe. But this is not... I'm not the kind of guy to be able to measure that for you. Um, you know, I play as much as I possibly can with a full-time career, which is another reason why this video took a week to make, besides the fact of how long it is and how much I wanted to show. Because in a lot of the videos, there's, you know, there's a lot of generalizations. Here's a couple of shots of it. You know, here's some gameplay, blah, blah, blah. But I really wanted to show the unboxing experiences. I have all the parts. I really wanted to show as much gameplay, you know, me going through the menu a bit, you know, that sort of thing. So that's why this video is so long, uh, if you <laughs> didn't skip to this point. Um, but beyond that, I mean, it's a, it's a good package. It's niche. You know, I can't see a lot of people buying this unless you're really into the scene or you're, I mean, maybe if you're older than me, you know, let's say you're in your 40s and maybe you were a teenager when, like, Space Harrier was the thing or, you know, maybe younger. But, you know, if Space Harrier was your thing as a child <laughs> in, you know, those generation of games, maybe this would appeal to you more. But me, there's no Street Fighter. There's no Fatal Fury. There's no Samurai Showdown. You know, there's no... A lot of things that I think this package should have. Um, and even from Sega, you know, there's no there's no proper outrun. You know, um, I don't... I don't get it. You know, their their selection was a little weird. You know, they, there's definitely some gems on here. Um, Ultra, um, Golden Axe 3 is, is one of those ones where I've actually never played that one before. And that's really good. I want to actually find the proper arcade PCB now so I can put it in the proper cabinet. But beyond that, I mean, again, like I mentioned earlier, there's like three versions of columns. Why? Why Sega? I don't get it. Uh, something else to keep in mind, uh, it's very cost prohibitive. Um, I mean, this was not released in the States, and I really doubt this will be, primarily because while there are plenty of people in America that know about candy cabs, that was not the form factor that most people knew about, you know, especially on the East Coast, all that kind of got imported, you know, from on the West Coast, obviously. So people are going to, people don't really know that form factor, not, not the majority, no matter what anybody says, the majority are used to stand up cabinets with, um, the wrap sticks that I absolutely hate. You know, I hate, I hate American joysticks I just, I can't stand them. Um, <clears throat> so it's limited there, but then like, again, like I said, it was cost prohibitive, um, getting it here. Shipping that entire box here was about fifty dollars on its by itself. The fight stick itself is like two fifty after tax, approximately. I don't remember how much the I don't remember how much the entire package was because I had already pre-ordered it months ago and I already had kind of paid it off and just kind of was like, all right, it'll get here when it gets here because they didn't have an exact release date. Um, I got it through Amiyami. I know that PlayAsia was uh, selling it and some other sites that are um, friendly to shipping to America. Um, I'm sure they're on eBay, and I wouldn't be surprised if the price gets scalped because they're, you know, the difficulty of getting them over um, from Japan because cost and everything else. So it's one of those things where if you're going to want it, it's going to cost you money. But, again, if you're going to buy it, you're probably only going to buy the cabinet... Not even the stand, because the stand itself, you know, that was like 30, 30 bucks just for that plastic piggy bank, you know. Um, and I don't know if it's worth it. I mean, it might be. It might be to you. You're, you will be the one to, to make that judgment call. But the things that knock it for me mostly is game selection and lackluster emulation. I mean, it has HDMI, which is great. Um, it scales up to 4K okay, even though it's 720p image. Um, you know, its options are kind of limited uh, from that perspective of using it. And certainly playing on that little joystick and buttons, while novel, um, you know, for someone who wears glasses and blind, a bat, <laughs> blind as a bat sometimes, definitely not the ideal way to play it. Um, if you have a desk or you have a game room like this, fine. That'd be great. In fact, I'll probably take it to work with me. 
that's probably where it's going to end up. It's probably, when when COVID is over. I know I'm dating the video. Um, will when I can go back to work and I have my office. Yeah, I'll probably put it back in the office. You know, that'd be really cute and something nice. You know, maybe something to play with once in a while when I'm trying to ease those tensions from uh, being around people once again. But beyond that. It's, 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 it varies wildly. Um, and my biggest disappointment over everything is just the game selection. Maybe not even the emulation, because it's still playable. Everything is playable. But, is it really, not even, I mean, I don't need Street Fighter, right, to be in it because I have the real arcade board or I have how many, who knows how many ports that I have at this point from PS1 or, you know, the original Super Nintendo version all the way to, you know, wherever the last version of uh, Street Fighter 2 2 Turbo or whatever comes out, right? Um, Or on the PC or in that crappy collection, the anniversary collection. But the fact that it's not there bothers me. It's not on the, in the cabinet. It's not represented. A lot of that cabinet's history is not represented because even though it's a Sega cabinet, if you're new to arcade cabinets, uh, especially candy cabinets, you know, they have what's known as a JAMA harness. It's a big giant, giant uh, connector. If you watch a lot of my arcade videos on the channel, you, you'll see it. Um, and it was a relatively universal standard and all these manufacturers who built arcade games, you know, they were on, on these giant, you know, most of the time, giant PCBs, uh, circuit boards, right? And you plugged it into the cabinet, and the cabinet was multifunctional. You could put, you could swap the games like you swap, you, you know, a cartridge games almost. Not exactly, but for to make this easy to understand, that is basically what you did. You swapped it, and you powered it on, and you might change some settings in its own little uh, CMOS, you know, kind of thing. Um, and then you're good. You know, in the BIOS, I mean, BIOS, not CMOS, BIOS, you, you would, you'd set these things and then you'd have whatever game you put in there. You know, the, these two cabinets I have right now, they both have standard JAMA harnesses. So I could put Turtles in Time in there, and then I could pull it out and I could put Street Fighter Alpha 2 in there, and then I could pull it out and put basically anything that doesn't have some weird connector, like old NES, uh, NES, uh, old, like, Nintendo cabinet stuff, or like, uh, version 1 Pac-Man boards or something that requires some weird connector. And then, then again, there's adapters for that. But even still, they were meant to be universal. And they were used universally. And where they exist now, in whatever establishments, uh, establishments have survived, um, even without COVID being a problem, you know, because arcade scene is basically dead. Uh, unless, the private scene is growing, but the proper arcade... You know, you go to a place where people play is dead. I'm sorry, it just is. The places like Round One, those are not. I mean, <laughs> they're not arcades. They're not. They're not. They're not arcades in the same way that people that that I recognize as an arcade. You know, um, yeah, they have some. Ga- <sighs> That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> Might talk about that after. But it's not like the arcades of yesteryear. So let's say, okay. Um, Still, the cabinets that are there, they have games swapped, and you know, most of them are Sega cabinets because they're the easiest to get and most abundant parts and everything else. You know, if they're not a Sega uh, Astro City, they're a Sega Blast City, which was you know, came after, which is a better cabinet. Um, why? You know, why? Why didn't Sega put that effort in? They went through all this effort to shape this thing. You know, to put these really good parts in it. You know, as far as like the sticks and the buttons. And really, you know, craft this thing, which is a nice piece. It's better than all these other little mini ones I've seen before. The screen is pretty nice. The emulation that puts everything in 4x3, which I'm really happy about as well. You know, which is a big thing. But they just didn't get the licensing. You know, and I know that Sega now is not the Sega of yore again. Obviously, that makes sense. They're a much smaller company. They're not the same company. They're not even remotely the same company. But... They could have tried. They could have tried. I mean, they could have even at least went to one or two. Go to Capcom. Say, hey, you know, can we have Vanilla Street Fighter 2? You know, go to SNK. Can we have Fatal Fury 1? 
or King of Fighters 95, which is on everything, you know, something else, something else that should be represented. That's my big problem with this, with this thing. Uh, I know I'm kind of ranting, you know, this is not scripted. I'm just kind of telling you as I, as I, as I see it, you know, I've been working on this for a long time now. I've played it a lot. It's been here, you know, the entire week, um, you know, since Friday and today's Friday. Um, and I finally got time to sit down and talk to you about it, you know, after filming parts and like, you know, playing with it and adjusting it and putting it else, you know, in the spot to record it, all those sorts of things. It takes time, which I don't usually have, you know, but, but holidays give that kind of, you know, time for me to do. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, I don't know. If you're like me and wanted more or expecting more, you might want to stay away from it. And and I would not pay scalper prices. Do not pay scalper prices. Not worth it. It is not worth going beyond retail for this thing. If you can get it for retail, great. Um, and the fight stick again, it's my favorite piece, the whole thing. I think aesthetically, more than anything, it's my favorite piece. Um, and functionally, since most of the fighting games I'm going to play again are on PC... It functions, so it has a purpose beyond this little this little cabinet, which is good because when you have that kind of price, when they're charging that kind of money, you know if it, if it only worked on this little cabinet, oh, forget about it. Unless you wanted a shell and then you got it, and you put like a Brook Universal board or something in there. But at that point, why are you spending that kind of money just because of the shell, the aesthetic? You know, um, there are other people who make Astro City looking sticks that actually work with everything other consoles retro in fact you know and you could do this to this one if you wanted to if you're so inclined but i'm not going to do that i'm probably going to leave it as is i i don't see i already have plenty of fight sticks that already do that take care of it for me so i know this is a long conclusion kind of ranting and if you've gone through it all i really appreciate it um, you know, put your comments below. Please subscribe. Help me pay for this expensive ass 4K camera. I hope you really like what I've recorded. Of course, the moment I start talking shit about this camera, it decides to die on me because of the battery. <laughs> anyway, again, please subscribe. Help me pay for this expensive ass camera. And uh, I will continue to upload um, as time allows. The more I want to do longer form videos like this where, you know, I get as much detail as I possibly can and I don't script a lot of what I talk about so if that's something you like great you know uh, I've been inspired by ACG who's a reviewer he does a lot of he does scripting but he talks usually about what he thinks and how he feels and that's what I wanted the conclusion to be about this so anyway long rant over if you really like the video like I said please give me a like subscribe let me know what you'd like to see comments everything i respond pretty pretty often uh, fairly quickly so anyway thanks for watching uh we made it through 2020 there will be more videos coming soon including getting the um thomas wave monitor up and running um hopefully we'll see i'm gonna record that and upload whatever ends up happening so if you're interested in arcade stuff more of that's coming soon thanks for watching